Hi everyone, it's Benza here. In the previous video I showed you how you can couple wind effect and interactivity in a grass shader using Unity's shader graph. You can find the link to that video in the upper right hand corner or in the description. To briefly sum it up, both wind and interactivity effects modify the vertex position, therefore we need a method to decide which effect we want to apply to a given vertex. The method we used was to measure the distance between the position of the given vertex and the player position and if it is greater than a given value we apply the the wind effect, otherwise we apply interactivity. However, this method uses booleans and while the shader code can handle that, it significantly slows the shader down, so we need to find a way to eliminate both the comparison and the branch nodes as both use booleans. Booleans are flags that carry true or false values, which is basically a 1 for true or a 0 for false. So we just need to find a way to replace our boolean type with a number and it will make the shader much faster. I have linked two sites in the description description that describe how we can avoid using booleans in shader code. In our case, the step and lerp functions seem to do the trick. Step returns 1 if x is greater than or equal to y, otherwise returns 0. Lerp linear interpolation between x and y using the parameter t. If t equals 0, the output will be x. If t equals 1, the output will be y. And if t is 0.5, the output will be the average of x and y, because that is exactly halfway between x and y. We can replace the comparison node with step and the branch node with lerp. As we can see, the shader looks the same as before, but now it is supposed to use less resource. Another optimization we can do is to remove the shadows from the grass. This is not exactly a shader optimization, but it is a very important one. Shadow calculation is rather expensive, so limiting the number of shadow casters makes sense. Grass is generally small, but you need lots of it, therefore disabling shadows for grass makes sense. Ok, now we disabled shadow casting on the grass prefab. Cheaper? Well, with this many grass you cannot really tell, but if you have large maps with lots of foliage it will make a difference, believe me. However, now the grass looks noticeably worse. It is flat. With a more interesting level layout, rocks, larger shadow casting foliage, such as bushes or trees, this flatness can be mitigated, but we can also add some fake shadows to the grass. I will apply a gradient to the grass with the darker part being at the bottom. This can be done in more ways. The most performant one is to apply the gradient to the texture directly. Since I wanted the shadow to be adjustable, we will add the gradient to the shader. So we get the object space position of each pixel and separate the green channel, which is the Y position. We subtract the shadow height from the Y position and apply a multiplier. This will control how blurry the edge of the shadow is. Then we use a negate node to move the shadow to the bottom part of the grass. Finally, we need a saturate node to avoid values above 1. Applying the shadow color is very simple. We need one color for the shadow and the lerp node, which interpolates between the original color and the shadow color based on the shadow height we have just created. The result is not as good as if the grass was casting shadow, obviously, but it is far better than the flat color we got after disabling shadow casting. I really hope you have found this video useful. If you did, give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!